Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part two of my visit to ESA's Open Day. This is a, a corridor full of masses of Earth science missions. But right now, we're going to go over to the cafeteria where the big science projects are. Hello, hi, Johannes. This is Johannes Benko, How are project you? scientist of Epi Columbus. So oh, my fav one of my favorite missions. I'm very excited about getting close to Mercury and getting some great maps, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Unfortunately, it takes a while to it go does there. Take, it's such a lot of delta V you got to uh, get rid of, right? Yes, and uh, unfortunately, we have not such a big rocket to pump so much fuel, so we need the help of the planet. And yep. that means we need to do nine flybys before we reach a Mercury. And that's in addition to the electric propulsion system, That's right? in addition to the electric propulsion and in addition to the power we already got from Ariane 5. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's, uh, I, I've looked at this, it's gonna take years to get down there, but more importantly, you know, you, we've had missions that have gone around Mercury, but the Mer messenger was in a highly eccentric orbit, so yeah. Bebe Colombo, with its various parts, is ultimately gonna get very close down to the planet and get very accurate maps, right? Yeah, and Ooh. that was very challenging for our design. We, we had to develop new technologies to protect our spacecraft and to make it able to stay in a nadia very close orbit to the planet that we get extremely good coverage of the south and the north northern hemisphere of the planet because i mean you bizarrely as you if when you're in deep space near the sun that's not as bad as being next to the planet because then the planet's re-radiating onto you yeah, that's true, and, and, and so the, the, the sun is also re-radiating a lot. We, we get a lot of heat from Mercury, and for that reason, we had special shielding developed, a special, uh, yeah, we call it multi-insulation uh, foil, which is six, seven centimeters thick, several layers, starting with the nextal fabric foil, and then Capton layers in order to have it inside very cozy for our instrument. Yeah. Our instruments operate from minus 20 to plus 50 degrees. But centigrade. On the, yeah. Centigrade, yeah. but on the outside we have 450 centigrade. And so and how more. does this satellite actually get rid of all that heat from the outside? Is there a radiator set yes. up in yes. the bottom? If you look at our model, on one side a big radiator. <laughs> but in, if you want to do a Nadia observation all the time, and you need to point the radiator away from the sun. And if you go in an orbit around Mercury, which is also going around the sun, yeah. then after 44 days, your radiator will see the sun. And yeah. the only trick you can do is to flip over the spacecraft that the radiator is on the other side, and then you continue your observation. So every 44 days, we have to do a flip over and then flying backwards, flip yeah. over again and fly. And Baby Colombo is actually multiple spacecraft, right? Yes, we do this mission together with our Japanese friends. It's a ESA JAXA mission, Japanese Space Agency. We send two orbiters and uh, one orbiter, which is more dedicated to the environment, is provided by the Japanese uh, agency. They recently renamed this to MIO, and uh, they have many plasma sensors on board. And uh, I think they will do a terrific job to characterize the space weather around Mercury. Okay, Johan. Thanks. This has uh, been great. I'd love to know more, but we can be places. But yeah. <laughs> Back at Space Expo, I found Giotto. Now, this spacecraft is the first spacecraft I remember being an ESA mission. This was a daring, a bold plan to fly close to the nucleus of Halley's Comet, and it was pretty spectacular. So this is what the actual Giotto looked like. It's a photograph just when it was being constructed. This flew within about 600 kilometers of Halley's Comet nucleus. It was the closest flyby of any cometary nucleus at that time. It was also a flyby at ridiculous speed, 68.7 kilometers per second. And these are the kind of images it got during that fly past. Now, sure, other spacecraft have gone faster, Helios, Juno, and of course, Parker Solar Probe, but this one went headlong into a dust cloud where a piece of dust had more energy than a bullet. The spacecraft has two layers. The lower one contains the instrumentation. This is the Particulate Impact Analyzer, which is a time of flight mass spectrometer. Whereas the middle layer contained all the flight control hardware and the uh, propulsion and everything. That silver cylinder with the ribbing in the middle, by the way, that is the kick motor, which uh, pointed downwards through the par uh, particle shield. And after it had fired, there would be a shield that would fold in over the nozzle to protect the whole thing. 
So this brave spacecraft was actually going in reverse when it approached these comets. I believe these two instruments are the neutral mass spectrometer and part of the plasma analyzer. I'm actually not sure where this model came from, by the way. It looks like an engineering mock-up with the actual hardware. I think this is a star tracker that's used when it's not spinning. It's obviously pointing the wrong direction to be a camera. You can also see some of the honeycomb material used for the exterior of the spacecraft. Yeah, this has all the wiring harnesses and connections and everything in position, so I think it was a, a mock-up for uh, ground people to test and figure out stuff. The dust shield is your classic Whipple shield design with a you know, thin layer and a standoff where the particles break up. This instrument here is the imaging system. It actually is a mirror that reflects the light back inside the spacecraft because, of course, they expected anything that poked out behind the dust shield to be essentially destroyed by uh, the particles flying by. And it was hit by a large object about the size of a pea, which knocked it off axis. But after that, it restored its rotation, sent images to Earth, and later was reactivated to encounter a second comet, Greg Skellerup. This is what the final thing looked like in space, and I think it's still one of my favorite missions. Hi, good. Franco. Hi. Hi. Hey, nice to good meet to you. see you. So I understand you're the, the man at the top of this fine facility, ISTEC, right? Yeah. Well, seem, in fact, uh, as head of the facility, you're just the one watching the other do things. You're watching... I, I'm, I'm, I'm very gifted in having a lot of very, very good people here. But you didn't they get there the by, not, by not being one of those people that can do things. Oh, like, no, no, the best clear. ones leave and then you, then right, you get left. Yeah, yeah exactly. You end up in the position. I mean, so much is going on at this facility right now. So, I mean, what's what do you think is the biggest thing that's coming down the pipeline for you uh, as a stick? Well, look, uh, it may not be the biggest thing, but I think it's one of the most exciting. We have a brand new program, it's called Space Safety. And in it, there are um, all of those things which are in between science and application, which are always difficult to convince people to do, but they are needed more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So we have missions to, we have clean space to take care of debris. Yeah and a mission to go and recover debris, uh, Adrios. We have HERA. I'm a big fan of that. And, and I'm a huge fan of HERA because we started out as Don Quixote, then it was AIM, and now it's with NASA and IDA. And I think HERA is just mind-boggling. I, I think it's the coolest thing to go and deviate an asteroid and then verify how much the universe absolutely and verify how much you did and make the models that will enable in the future to deviate something that's it, potentially we're literally dangerous. investigating saving the world yeah and absolutely like, cool absolutely 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 it's not a small thing no. uh, and so i mean to be clear hera is going to do the ideally going to do the follow-up from the double asteroid yeah. redirect test well, part the uh, exactly. So that is gonna hit, but it it just slams into it, and, and then it cannot. Gone. And then it it's can, gone. Yeah. It does take no data, etc. So here is gonna get there and take all the data and make sure that we can make models that tell us, hey, this is the asteroid. That's where it's coming from, and this is its mass, and this is what we need to deviate and not having it in the Earth. Yeah. So I think that's coolest. Then we have uh, missions for um, space weather. We go to L5, we observe the sun, we make sure we know when there's space weather coming. And of course, you know, problem of debris is also a problem of avoiding debris. So using artificial intelligence to make sure that we don't... To coordinate the to thousands coordinate, of spacecraft yeah, exactly, in orbit. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, we, with the launch cadence getting so high so fast, we need new technologies to really understand the near space environment and coordinate between effort, basically be the space traffic controller. Exactly. Right. And I could have put it better. Oh. But uh, then you saw, you know, space is a place, it's not a discipline. So you, you do everything in space. Every, yeah. And uh, so we have some very, very cool science missions. It's always a little bit embarrassing that we know a little more than 5% of the universe mass. Yeah. So it's good to have missions like Euclid and Plato to help us look. And 
when I went to school, we had only nine planets. Now we got eight, eight. in the solar we've system. Got, we've got a lot of but we, planets. we found a thousand planets on other stars, yeah. which we were only postulating back then. And now we got so blasé that we're actually looking for the one with the atmosphere at the right, right distance, etc. Now, now we uh, we are. We've gone past being the beggars can't be choosers, now yeah. we're trying to pick the best ones. Exactly. And with asteroids, you know, minor planets, we're like 750,000 of yeah, them. exactly. Like the catalogue of what we know has grown yeah. so much, It's we have a, an abundance of targets to yeah. choose from. Not only that, we have an abundance of fueling stations on the way. And totally true. And so our advanced concept team just ran a competition on colonizing the galaxy, and there's some very cool videos that you can get okay, on Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested. You, you in should that. see that. Galaxy's a big place, but we have plenty of time, yeah, right? Exactly. Anyway, uh, I think there are two areas which are really, for me, super cool. One is we're really going back to the moon. Yes. So we made uh, the service model, we shipped it to Cape Canaveral. I'm it's so going to go. And we're going to do it this time. We talked about it all through my career. This time we do it. And I think that's coolest. But on the other hand, ESA is the largest provider of environmental data from space in the world. Yep. Thanks to Copernicus European Union program, but we are the ones who made it happen. And I think that's the big challenge of the future of today. And that's why for me, it's it's fantastic that we're now, we just launched a satellite that tells you the wind across Aeolus, the world, yeah. Aeolus, first time in history. Yeah. You don't need balloons, you don't need anything anymore, Aeolus will tell you all. And the prediction gets desperately good. Yeah. On Monday they said it will rain on Sunday, but it would be good on Saturday and Monday. And I thought, okay, it's one week, it'll be okay. Yeah. Nope. It was precisely that. Yesterday yeah. was a nice day. Monday at eight o'clock tonight, you'd see clear skies. Yeah, but we still have thousands of people here despite the weather because oh, yeah. everybody's a fan of space. That's <laughs> that's the wonderful thing. If the weather was great, it would be great. But yeah. it's even better when you've yeah. got thousands. Yeah. Of people. yeah, no, it's fantastic. Right? And apart from that, yeah, I think I'm so proud of what we're doing for the environment that. That, for me, it's really a you, big yeah, legacy. Yeah, space, it's, space has to inform life on Earth, yeah. right? And we are using all the technology. It's not just looking outwards, we're looking inwards. And we're changing things for the better for people on yeah. planet Earth as Absolutely, well. absolutely. And if you will, the thing that it's really uh, driving is the fact that we tell about truth. Yeah. There's, so there's no going around it. There's you, no alternative can get the facts. Numbers and they can it's do the, truth. the research and find exactly. the same truths as any scientist. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so I'm I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for uh, having well, us. And thanks, thanks for, for coming. talking to thanks me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And yeah. I thanks come for back uh, more. Yeah. Well, please do. And thanks for showing us to those who couldn't be here today. Thank you. Thanks, Franco. Fly safe. Yeah, huh? sure. Thanks.